हरिबोल प्रभु लीला थोड़ा उनका परिचय दे दो राधा कृष्ण प्रभु इज बॉर्न इन डॉट ऑफ इन वृंदावन एंड अमेरिका लेटर ऑन बट नाउ हिज टीचिंग थ्रू आउट इंडिया एंड नाउ थ्रू आउट द वर्ल्ड ही हेज बीन फोर फाइव मंथ्स टीचिंग इन अमेरिका एंड हिज स्पेशलिटी इज आर आर परम्परा आचार्य देयर कमेंट्रीज बी हेयर फ्रॉम हिज माउथ वेरी गुड एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ भगवद गीता एंड ऑल स्क्रिप्चर सो वट इज आर परम्परा इफ यू वॉन्ट टू फाइंड इन डेप सो हिज लेक्चर्स आर a demonstration of that and uh, he has been uh, he's he'll be here for another 3 weeks in uh, london and other areas coventry and birmingham and then he's going to hall in after that so we'll have his association uh, for another 2 3 weeks so we welcome him uh, to our house we are very blessed we are blessed to have uh, pastor prabhu he's also his father he's the temple president of vidhana uh, temple in uh, uh, india bharat and we have tuskish prabhu who has uh, blessed us with his association come all the way and we welcome all the devotees for coming hari krishna so um 2:00 o'clock right
परमहंस परिव्राज काचार्य वर्य अष्टोत्तर शत श्री श्रीमद अभय चरणारविंद भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी श्रील प्रभुपाद नित्य लीला प्रविष्ट ओम विष्णुपाद परमहंस परिव्राज काचार्य वर्य अष्टोत्तर शत श्री श्रीमद हिवाइन ग्रेस भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती गोस्वामी महाराज श्रील प्रभुपाद ग्रंथराज श्री श्री भक्ति रसामृत सिंधु की डायरेक्टर ऑफ डिवोशन मॉर्निंग क्लास की जय युग धर्म श्री हरिनाम संकीर्तन की समवेत भक्त वृंद की पिताई गौर प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि बोल हरि हरि बोल हरि हरि हरे कृष्ण ओम अज्ञान तिरांध से ज्ञानाजन शलाकया चक्षुन्मील तस्म श्री गुरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित येन भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददाति स्वदातिक वंदेहम श्री गुरो श्रीयुतपदकमल श्रीगुरून् वैष्णवांश्च श्रीरूप साग्र जा सह गण रघुनाथान्वित तम सजीव साधवैत सवधूत हरिजन सहित कृष्णचैतन्यदेव श्रीराधा कृष्ण पाला सगण ललिता श्री विशाखान्वता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीनबंधो जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदवनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाचाकलोभ्य कृपा सिंधु पतिम पावेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्री आदवैतरदान श्रीवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण at the very onset of present day's discourse i would like to initially offer my most respectfully prostrated obeisances unto the lotus feet of their divine lordships shri shri radha and govind dev ji along with their transcendental companions and associates such as shri lalita devi shri vishakha devi shri roop arati manjari etc and along with them i would also like to submit my most respectfully prostrated submissive homages <coughs> unto the lotus feet of their transcendental lordships shri shri krishna chaitanya mahaprabhu and shri shri nityananda prabhu along with their perpetual divine entourage comprising of shri la roop goswami shri la sanatan goswami and all the six goswamis of shri dham vrindavan finally i would also like to pay my obeisances and due honorary respects unto the lotus feet of his divine grace abhaya charanar vind bhakti vedant swami shri la prabhupad who has been a supra mundane adept in the matter of dispersing krishna consciousness who has thus distributed the science of pure devotional service imbued with transcendental sentiments and moods <coughs> throughout this world in this present modern era in most unique and fantastic unprecedented way 
conclusively, I would also like to pay my obeisances and due respects unto the lotus feet of the initiating spiritual master along with all the preceptorial spiritual masters as well as the senior Vaishnava devotees of the Lord present herein and thereafter now let us commence the context of current day's discussion especially the topic and uh, context pertaining to uh, the science of devotional <coughs> process. So we will focus, uh, we, will deliberate, we will deliberate mainly uh, over the nectar of devotion alias Shri Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu compiled by Shri Rupa Goswami in our present session that will be the center point of our pondering and our concentration. So, in the very invocatory verse of Shri, La, uh, of Shri Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Shri La Rupa Goswami Pad prays unto Lord Shri Krishna thus Akhila Rasamrita Murtihi Prasri Mararu Chiruddhatara Kapalihi Kalita Shyama Lalito Radha Priyan Vidhur Jayati Shri La Rupa Goswami Pad says that let there be all victory and all glory to that omnipotent Shri Krishna who is endowed with all excellence and who is the very personification of the transcendental paramount bliss characterized by the twelve forms of rasa. Akhila Rasamrita Murtihi. Let that transcendental moon, Shri Krishna Chandra, be all victorious be all glorious. And um, by the radiance emanating from his transcendental limbs of his medium sized icon, that Sri Sham Sundar of Rindavan, he has brought under his own control uh, different cowherd damsels or cowherd milkmaids of Rindavan, especially the Tarka or the uh, Vipaksha or the group which is completely rival, uh, the group of the cowherd damsels of Rindavan, uh, the gopis of Rindavan, which is completely opposite and rival to the group of Srimati Radhika. So also Sri Krishna has brought under his uh, own control uh, another group of gopis known as Pali, which represents, uh, which is also sometimes known as Tatastha Vipaksha and Tatastha Baksha. Vipaksha means the rival group headed by Sri Chandravali Devi, Sri Chandravali, Shri Chandravali uh, who is also known as Taraka. These are the alternative uh, terminologies that Sri Narupa Goswami Pad has used in the very invocatory verse, Mangala Charan Shlok of this unprecedented treatise. Huh? Prasri Mara Ruchi Ruddha Taraka Palihi Akhila Rasamrita Murutihi Prasri Mara Ruchi Ruddha Taraka Palihi Ruchi means the bodily effulgence. Hmm? By that radiance, by that transcendental uh, splendor or effulgence, which is completely flamboyant uh, in its innate identity, by that uh, divine halo or radiance emanating from his transcendental limbs and thereby the radiance which spreads and disperses the sweetness of his transcendental personality, the sweetness also known as Krishna Madhurya, Krishna Madhurya Vitaranakarya, that uh, act of dispersing the sweetness of Sri Krishna's great personality, which is done by the radiance emanating from his transcendental body. What that radiance does, what are the after effects of that radiance uh, and it's being dispersed? Through all the nooks and corners of the spiritual world, through all the different sides of the spiritual world, after that the radiance gets manifest, it brings under its own control uh, the rival group to Srimati Radhika, also known as uh, Vipaksha, uh, headed by uh, Chandravali Devi, who is in this verse known as Taraka, Taraka Gopi. Prasri Mara Ruchi Ruddha Taraka Pali. Ruddha means Krishna has brought under his own control. He has confined. Ruddha means confined. That's the literal definition. Ruddha Taraka Pali. And Krishna has also brought under his own control uh, the neutral group to that of Srimati Radhika, known as Tatastha Paksha, which is represented by or which is headed by a cowherd damsel known as Palika or um, 
Padma. Hmm? That is the alternative name here. So, um, there are actually four groups existing. There are four groups of cowherd damsels existing in the transcendental land of Vraj Bhumi Vrindavan Dham. In that non phenomenal supramundane region, there are four types of cowherd damsels existing. Preliminary, there are two types existing, but among the two types, uh, the latter type is again divided fourfold. What are the two types of cowherd damsels existing? Who are they? First, the Vatsalya Bhagavati Gopis, and the second are known as, the second division is known as uh, Shringar Bhagavati Gopi, Gopis. That means those cowherd damsels who are within their hearts fostering and nurturing the transcendental uh, mellow and mood of parental affection, especially the maternal affection. They are known as Vatsalya Bhavavati <coughs> Gopis. And uh, the Vatsalya Bhavavati Gopis, the group of the uh, uh, cowherd damsels who are having parental affection for Shri Krishna, maternal affection for Shri Krishna, is headed by, is represented by the chief leader of that group, Vaisa Dalit, Mother Yashoda. So, <coughs> Vatsalya Bhavavati Gopis, the division of that is headed by Mother Yashoda. She is the representative of that, of that flock. And the second flock of Kavar damsels is known as Shringar or Madhur Bhavavati Gopis. And those are the Kavar, uh, those are the Kavar girls uh, or Kavar damsels or the milkmaids of Vrindavan who are uh, having, who are fostering the transcendental mellow of conjugal love, especially the mellow of paramour relationship and that paramour relationship of a, of a very specific type known as Samartha Rati. And that paramour relationship, those who are fostering, they are known as the Shringar Bhavavati Gopis or those Kavar damsels who are having conjugal relationship with Shri Krishna. So, uh, among those Gopis who are having the conjugal relationship with Shri Krishna, there are again... Uh, Actually, conj conjugal love is again divided twofold. Shringar Ras or conjugal love, which is also known as Adi Ras, Shri Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, Shri Narupa Goswami, uh, they have termed Shringar by an alternative name known as Adi Ras. They call Shringar by another synonymous nomenclature or designation, which is Adi Ras. Adi Ras means uh, the transcendental mellow, which is the origin of all the other mellows. For that reason, we find that there are 12 mellows in total. In aggregate, in aggregate quantity, there are 12 mellows, Dvadash Bhakti Ras. And those 12 mellows that have been mentioned by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he is imparting his transcendental sermons to Sri Rupa Goswami uh, at the conjunction of the sacred trinity of rivers, Ganga, Yamuna and Saraswati at Tirthraj Prayag, at that time, uh, that dialogue has been recorded by Sri Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami Das. Chaitanya Charita, uh, in Chaitanya Charitamrit, when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is uh, enumerating uh, the varieties of transcendental juicy mellows existing in the transcendental region, Mahaprabhu says, Shanta Dasya Sakya Vatsalya Madhura Rasa Nama Krishna Bhakti Rasa Madhye E Pancha Pradhana that there are 12 mellows, but among those 12 mellows, among those 12 rasas, among those 12 aprakrit chinmay rasas, we are not talking about perverted, mundane, temporal and inert mellows, which are rather reflections of the original transcendental, uh, completely cognitive and uh, eternal mellows. We are talking about the real original mellows, which are existing in the transcendental world, which are not inert, but which are rather completely conscious and eternally existing and which are not the products of the three modes of material nature. Therefore, because of not being the products of Prakriti, Trigunatmika Prakriti, they are not known as Prakrit, rather they are known as Aprakrit Chinmay Ras. That is not, we are not talking about the Jada Rasa here. We are not talking about the Prakrit mundane uh, pleasure here. We are rather talking about the transcendental pleasure. Therefore, uh, that transcendental pleasure has been uh, hinted upon by Lord Shri Krishna in his uh, sacred conversation with Arjuna in Bhagavad Gita 2nd chapter thus 
विषया विवर्तंते निराहार से देही ना है रवर जम्र सोक्य से परम दृष्टवा निवर्तते that as long as the hankering the uh, the inward hankering for the for the material pleasures and tastes uh, arising from different types of uh, sense sensual uh, gratifications and different types of sense objects remains uh, as long as that remains the transcendental pleasure cannot be experienced but as long as the transcendental pleasure is experienced the hankering uh, and the uh, longing for tasting uh, the mundane uh, uh, mellows and mundane flickering temporal pleasure immediately becomes vanquished so <coughs> lord krishna has hinted upon um, he has hinted uh, on that transcendental pleasure and the caliber of that transcendental pleasure and the sterling standard that that transcendental pleasure possesses in that verse of shrimad bhagavad gita but here in bhakti rasamrita sindhu the very base of bhakti rasamrita sindhu is the transcendental paramount bliss and that transcendental paramount bliss which in turn emanates from ahladini shakti or the pleasure giving potency of the lord and that pleasure giving potency of the lord which in turn gets manifest from the anand aspect of lord's personality in uh, in uh, the shat sandarbhas jiva goswami explains that lord krishna's personality possesses three attributes which are integrated to his innate self and those uh, three inherent attributes that lord krishna possesses in his self are first the uh, sat aspect or the aspect of uh, perpetual existence the second attribute is the chit aspect or, or the aspect of uh, eternal cognition possessed by the lord and the third is the aspect known as the aspect of transcendental bliss uh, anand aspect which makes the lord uh, completely uh, parmanand may completely full of transcendental pleasure and which makes the lord atma ram apt kaam and purna kaam completely self satisfied and full of uh, inward pleasure which he receives from the interior of his self so that he doesn't have to rely on extraneous objects for getting satisfied as is as is the case in the mundane world the lord is doesn't rely on extraneous objects which are external to his self for his own satisfaction why because his atma ram is getting that transcendental pleasure from within his self so these are the three aspects that the lord's personality possesses that's why brahma sanhita fifth chapter first first verse also corroborates the same ishwara paramah krishna satchidanand vigraha anadiradir govinda sarva karana karanam that that primeval personality known as lord govinda deva the master of all the senses cowherd damsels cowherd boys and cows and calves that govinda dev is rather possessing the transcendental medium sized physical personal figure or icon which is full of which is none other than uh, uh, the personification of the three aspects namely cognition bliss uh, and uh, the perpetual existence sat chetananand sat chidananda vikraha and there also in padma puran vyasdev confirms the same by saying sat chidananda rupaya vishvutpatyadi hetave ta patraya vinashaya shri krishna yavayam namaha we pay our obeisances unto that shri krishna who is uh, who can eradicate all the three types of miseries or afflictions found in this material world all the three types of pangs pangs of distress which are adi daivik adhyatmik and adi bhautik lord krishna has the power to eradicate that and he is the original cause of the sustenance creation and dissolution of this uh, phenomenal world and he is completely possessing these three aspects in his personality that's why he is satchidananda rupaya vishvutpatyadi hetave tapatraya vinashaya shri krishnaya vayam namaha so Lord Krishna possesses these three aspects within his personality from the sat aspect of his personality emanates sandhini shakti now sandhini is different from the sat aspect because there is cause and effect cause and effect relationship karan karya karan bhav janya janaka sambandh cause and effect relationship sandhini shakti the potency of sandhini these are the three types of internal potencies actually lord krishna possesses in total three types of potencies lord krishna is the only soul potent prince principle existing within this uh, within this world within all the three worlds what are the three worlds the material world comprising of innumerable universes marginal world which is the causal ocean where karma dakshai the first purush incarnation resides and the spiritual world beginning from the brahman effulgence 
and uh, Vaikuntha and going and extending up to the goal of Vrindavan Dham. That spiritual world, marginal world and external and, and the material world, all the three worlds combined, the whole Chatushpada Vibhuti, as the Purusha Sukta of the Veda mentions, Om Tripada Syam Ritam Divi, all the whole Chatushpada Vibhuti, all the four parts of total creation, one part of the total creation is the material world, which in turn comprises of innumerable universes and the three fourths of the total creation is the marginal and the spiritual world combined together. So the whole Chatushpada the, the, all the four parts of the total creation within all the total uh, four parts of the total creation lord krishna is the sole energetic principle existing he is the only potent principle he is the only shakti man tattva that's why chaitanya charitamrita confirms the same by saying ekale ishwara krishna ara sabhritya that only krishna is the potent or energetic principle and that potent energetic principle has again three potencies or energies that are controlled that are supervised that are possessed by him and those three uh, energies of whom um, he is the proprietor. Those three energies are enumerated by the father of Lord Vyastev Parashar Muni in his conversation to Maitreya in uh, Vishnu Puran as thus. Vishnu Shakti Para Prokta Kshetrajya Khya Tatha Para Avidya Karma Sangyanya Tritiya Shakti Rishyate so The Lord possesses these three potencies. Vishnu has these three potencies. The Avidya Maya Shakti which is the external uh, potency uh, which is the personified deity of the material nature or illusion or nescience uh, which is the personified deity of Avidya and which possesses three aspects Sattva and Tam mundane modes of goodness, passion and ignorance. Then higher to that potency from that potency emanates all the eight, uh, uh, all the five gross elements and the three subtle elements: man, man buddhi, hankar, mind, intelligence, false ego, and the five material elements which are gross, uh, that are earth, water, fire, etc. Bhumi, rapa, nalo, vayu, kham, mano, buddhi, re, vacha, ahankar, iti, yamme, bhinna, prakriti, rashtadha. And then there is one superior potency to that material nature, known as marginal potency, sometimes also known as kshetragya shakti. That's why Vishnu Purana Shloka says, Vishnu shakti hi para prokta kshetragya khya tatha para. And that kshetragya shakti or Jiva Shakti, also known as Tatastha Shakti, also known as marginal <coughs> potency, that is superior to the uh, uh, abo, uh, aforementioned external potency Mahamaya. And that's why Krishna also says Bhagavad Gita in Bhagavad Gita that Apareya Mitas Panyam Prakritim Vidhi Me Param Jiva Bhutam Mahabaho Yayadam Dharyate Jagat. And then a uh, higher to even that marginal potency consisting of innumerable conditioned living entities within itself, even higher, even superior to that marginal potency is Lord Krishna's own internal potency which is part of his innate constitution which is part of his inherent identity and his very internal nature which is part of his own swarup which is part of his own personality which is an integrated part just like fire has two potencies which are integrated parts of itself and if fire is made separated from those two parts fire loses its very existence its very <coughs> nomenclature uh, of being called fire and what are those potencies the potency of light, illumination and the potency of heat. If these two potencies are not present in fire, fire cannot be considered as fire in the same way. If the internal potency will not be uh, existing in Krishna's personality within itself, then Krishna will not be considered as Krishna. Bhagavan will not be considered as Bhagavan. That supreme personality of God and that absolute truth, that samambonam, that ashrayi tattva will lose its very existence. That's why Shri Krishna possesses the internal potency which is integrated part of itself. That's why avidya karma sangyanya tritiya shakti rishyate. These are the three potencies marginal, external, internal possessed by the Lord. Shvetashvata Upanishad found in the Vedas confirms the same by saying natasya karyam karanam cha vidyate natat samaschavyate kascha shruyate swabhaviki jnana balakriya cha. Parasya shakti vividhai vashruyate swabhaviki jnana balakriya cha. So jnana shakti is the same as samvit here. Samvit. Gyan Shakti is the same as Samvit. Uh, Bal Shakti is the same as uh, Sandhini and Kriya Shakti is the same as Ahladini. That is how Jiva Goswami matches uh, the uh, synonymous terminologies used in the Shvetashvatar Shlok and those used in the Vishnu Puran Shlok. That's why Vishnu Puran again says Haladini Sandhini Sambit Tvayeka Sarvasam Stitau Haladatapa Kari Mishra Tvayino Guna Varjite O Lord, in your personality are present only three types of internal potencies Haladini Sandhini and Sambit Tvayeka Sarvasam Stitau They are existing in you. So, these three types of internal potencies in Shraddha Shwatar are rather known by a different name Gyan, Shakti, Bala Shakti and Kriya Shakti. Now, that internal potency from sat aspect arises sandhini, 
from chit aspect arises sambit and from the anand aspect arises ahladini what is the difference now first let us understand that these are the three potencies external marginal and internal possessed by the lord and then again internal is is divided threefold sandini sandit sambit and ahladini and shri krishna is the potent principle existing and shri krishna the potent principle manifests into threefold diversities again vadanti tat tattva vidas tattvam yach gyana madvayam brahmeti paramatmeti bhagavan iti shabdyate the potent principle again in turn manifests into three diversities shri krishna being yaj gyanam advayam shri krishna is the advay gyan partatva shri krishna is the original non dual absolute truth ekam advitiyam brahma na dvitiyasti kashchit as the veda says that supreme absolute truth is only one and not two that's why the vedic dharma advocates only monotheism and completely negates the idea of so called distorted polytheism so the supreme absolute truth can only be one and that supreme absolute truth advai gyan paratatva that is swayam bhagwan shri krishna of vrindavan dham the son of mother nandan yashoda that's why it has been even said by the staunch follower of adi shankaracharya who in turn became vaishnava after the association of jiva goswami in the medieval in, in, in the medieval times known as shri madhusudan saraswati pad one of the foremost acharyas and pillars of the shankaracharya's mayavad line madhusudan saraswati at last he also had to accept what vanshe vibhushita karanav niradabhat pitambara daruna bimb phala dharoshthat purnendu sundaram khadar vindanetrat krishnat kimapi paratattva aham na jane that i personally do not know that there is any other higher principle that there is any any other higher truth tattva existing superior to shri krishna who is holding flute in his hands vanshi vibhushita karan this famous verse that is spoken Huh? that is spoken uh, by many different scholars in india this famous verse is actually uh, is actually uh, in the um, the fame of the uh, fame of composing this shloka is allotted to madhusudan saraswati pad the one of the staunch and foremost pillars of shankaracharya line without which the shankaracharya line would not have uh, stood so firmly on so uh, uh, so so much firm basis so to speak so that madhusudan saraswati after associating with shri jiva goswami and other vaishnava acharyas of medieval india he came to the conclusion that supreme personality of godhead shri krishna is the only absolute truth therefore vadanti tat tattva vidas tattvam yaj gyanam advayam brahmeti paramatmeti bhagavan iti shabdyate that non dual absolute truth as lord vyasdev proclaims in shrimad bhagavatam gets manifest into three forms into three fold diversities and all those three fold diversities they are not types of energies they are not forms of his energies but they are rather forms of the energetic principle nirvishesh brahma impersonal brahman is not energy is rather the potent principle itself because chaitanya mahaprabhu uh, calls nirvishesh brahma to be sashaktika to be and uh, possessed and uh, to be endowed with the potencies nirvishesh brahma or impersonal brahma is possessed of the potencies so how can nirvishesh brahma be considered potency if it is the possessor of potencies nirvishesh brahma paramatma and bhagwan all of these three are rather forms of the non dual absolute truth a uh, swayam bhagwan shri krishna all of these three are rather forms of energetic principle and not the forms of energies so impersonal brahman which is none other than the effulgence uh, emanating from shri krishna's transcendental body that nirvishesh nirakar brahma jyoti is rather the most uh, inferior form of that absolute truth uh, of that energetic principle shri krishna then a uh, higher to that is the localized portion of shri krishna known as parmatma or indwelling super soul shri dakshai vishnu higher to that form of absolute truth is the bhagwan feature possessing all the six uh, uh, types of uh, uh, transcendental opulences in full aishvaryasya samagrasya viryasya yasha sahasriya gyan vairagya yoshchaiva sharanam bhagaitingana these six types of bhagas or aishvaryas as they have been mentioned in vishnu puran the possessor of these six opulences in full is known as the bhagwan feature so narayan and all the incarnations and expansions like narayan ram narsingh varah matsya kurma who are originally coming out from narayan they are those all vishnu tattva expansions those all swansha tattvas they are known as bhagwan shri dakshai vishnu karan dakshai and garbha dakshai these three purusha incarnations are known as parmatma and the impersonal brahman effulgence is known as 
the Brahman here. So all these three, Brahma, Paramatma and Bhagavan, they are rather different displays. They are rather uh, variegated vari forms of the same energetic original primeval principle, Shri, Shri Krishna of Sri Ram Vrindavan, who is neither Bhagavan, who is neither Paramatma, who is neither Brahma, but who is Swayam Bhagavan. The example of the original candle light and the other candle lights being lit from the original candle is given to differentiate the Bhagavan feature from the Swayam Bhagavan feature. Deepar chire vahi dashantra babhyu petya deepayate vibrita hetu samana dharma yastadrige vahi cha vishnu tayavi bhaati bhoi vanadi prashantam ham bhajami ramadi murti shukalani amena tishtan etc. So that Shri Krishna who is the uh, chief and who is the most original and primeval form of the energetic principle who is the Adi Shakti Man Tattva. Narayan is not Adi Shakti Man. Ramchandra is not Adi Shakti Man. Shirodakshai Vishnu is not Adi Shakti Man. And Nirakar Dimashesh Brahma is not Adi Shakti Man. They are secondary energetic principles being, uh, being expanded from the original energetic Shri Krishna who is the Swayam Bhagavan. Whereas that Shri Krishna possesses three potencies and again his internal potency is divided threefold now. And that internal potency, Haladini Shakti emanates from the Ananda aspect the Sandhini Shakti emanates from the Sat aspect and the Samhiti Shakti emanates from the Chitta aspect. Now, what is the difference between Sandhini and uh, Sat, uh, Samhit and Chit and Anand and Ahradini? What is the difference between the three aspects and the three types of energies being produced from the three aspects of Lord Swarup? What is the difference? Cause and effect relationship. That's the difference. The three aspects are cause and the three energies being manifest from the three internal aspects of Lord's identity are the effects. So, Ananda is present, the transcendental paramount bliss is present in Swayam Bhagavan Shri Krishna's internal identity. But when that Ananda, when that transcendental paramount bliss, as Chiva Goswami explains in the Sandarbhas, when that Ananda aspect of the Lord simultaneously becomes manifest extraneous to his identity, then Assuming a personal figure, then that is known as Ahladin Shakti. Let me explain in Hindi. Jab wo jo Bhagwan ki Anand Shakti hai, wo na Bhagwan ka jo Anand 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 jo gun hai unke swarup ke bhitar, unke swarup ke antar varti Anand Ram ka jo gun hai, wo Anand Ram ka gun yugpat roop se simultaneously. युगपत रूप से जब श्री भगवान के स्वरूप के अंदर भी रहता है और साथ साथ में श्री भगवान के स्वरूप के बाहर भी प्रकाशित होता है एक व्यक्तिगत मूर्त रूप धारण करके साकार रूप धारण करके वह आनंद राम का जो भगवान का स्वरूप भूत गुण है वह जब भगवान के स्वरूप के बाहर उनके उनके रूप के बाहर जब प्रकाशित होता है युगपत रूप से तब उस पृथक्कीकृत हुआ जो उनका आनंद का जो मूर्तिमान रूप है जो भगवान के स्वरूप से पृथक्कीकृत हुआ है भगवान के स्वरूप से बाहर प्रकाशित हुआ है उस रूप को हम आह्लादिनी शक्ति कहेंगे उसी प्रकार से जो चित नाम का गुण है भगवान के स्वरूप में वह एक एक रूप से तो भगवान के स्वरूप में ही विद्यमान रहेगा एवं दूसरे रूप में वह श्री भगवान के स्वरूप से बाहर निकलकर जब एक मूर्त रूप धारण करता है जब एक साकार व्यक्ति वैयक्तिक रूप धारण करता है तब उसको हम समृद्ध शक्ति कहेंगे उसी प्रकार से जब जो सत नाम का गुण है भगवान के स्वरूप के अंतर्वर्ती भाग में वह जब युगपत रूप से अपने आप को बाहर भी प्रकाशित करता है भगवान के स्वरूप के बाहर भी प्रकाशित करता है पुनः साकार मूर्त रूप धारण करके तो उस साकार मूर्त रूप को हम संधिनी शक्ति कहेंगे लाइक द ट्रांसेंडेंटल पैरामाउंट ब्लिस व्हेन इट इज प्रेजेंट इनसाइड श्री कृष्णस पर्सनालिटी देन इट इज नोन एज स्वरूपानंद बट व्हेन दैट ट्रांसेंडेंटल पैरामाउंट ब्लिस व्हिच साइमल्टेनियसली becomes many friend manifest external or extraneous outside Shri Krishna's personality assuming a different form then that form of Ahradini Shakti that personal form of Ahradini Shakti that physical form of Ahradini that physical form of Ananda aspect sorry that physical form of the Ananda aspect of the Lord becomes known as Ahradini Shakti and that is not different from Shri Radha the the, the 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 transcendental pleasure existing within Shri Krishna's personality, if it is within personality of Krishna, then it is known as Ananda aspect. And, and if it comes out of Shri Krishna's personality and assumes a transcendental form of a cowherd mil milkmaid of Vrindavan as being daughter of Rishabhanu and Kirtida and assumes the name of Srimati Radhika, then she is known as Ahradini Shakti. 
In the same way, when the chit aspect assumes its spirit transcendental form outside of Sri Krishna's personality, then it is known as Samvita Shakti alias Yogamaya represented by Subhadra. In Dwarka, represented by Ikanan Shai Mathura and represented by Bhagavati Vrinda and Bhagavati Paurnamasi in Vrindavan. Yogamaya has three different forms in Dwarka, Mathura and Vrindavan pastimes. Ahradini Shakti in Vrindavan is Srimati Radhika. Ahradini Shakti in Dwarka and Mathura is Rukmini. And Vaikuntha is Lakshmi. Ahradini Shakti is Lakshmi in Vaikuntha. Ahradini Shakti is Janki in Ayodhya. And in the same way, the Sandhini Shakti, when it gets manifest outside Shri Krishna's personality into manifold diversities, like the transcendental touchstone jewels, like the transcendental desire trees, like the transcendental land of Vrindavan, like Giriraj Govardhan, and like Lord Shri Krishna's uh, associated paraphernalia, crown, flute, peacock feather, etc., then that uh, sat aspect of the Lord becomes known as Sandhini Shakti. This is how. This is the difference between the Satchit and Anand and the energies produced from the Satchit and Anand, the threefold aspects of Krishna's inner personality. That's the only difference. So, what is the Samvit in the three places? Uh, Samvit Shakti in uh, Dwarka pastimes is known as Subhadra because Samvit is the same as Yogmaya. Samvit is known as Yogmaya. Yogmaya's uh, uh, duty is to coordinate, is to supervise over Krishna's pastimes. Ahladini Shakti's duty is to give pleasure to both Shri Krishna and to his associates. Samvit or Yogamaya's duty is to coordinate over Lord's pastimes and to make Lord cognizant and to make his associates cognizant. That means omniscient or full of knowledge. That is Samvit Shakti Chit, cognitive aspect, knowledge aspect. Bliss aspect is Anand, knowledge aspect is Chit. And the eternal existence. What is that potency which provides eternal existence, perpetual existence to both the Lord, his associates and all his related paraphernalia? That potency which makes the Lord's, uh, Lord's form eternal, his associates forms eternal and all the other paraphernalia eternal is known as Sandhini Shakti or Sat aspect, the aspect of eternal existence. So eternal existence, cognition and bliss, these are the three aspects. Now. We were discussing that Srimati Radhika, she is the original Ahradini Shakti. She is Ahradini Shakti means at the same time Ahradini Shakti as the Anand aspect stays within Lord's personality and at the same time Ahradini Shakti also becomes manifest outward to his personality being known as Radhika simultaneously. It's not that the light and the heat energies are now taken away from fire, so fire cannot have any meaning. So if the threefold internal potencies get separated from Krishna's personality and become manifested outside, now Krishna loses these three potencies as his integrated parts and now Krishna cannot be called Krishna or Bhagavan. No, no, no. Because even though they get manifest outside to his personality, they also stay within his personality simultaneously. That's the difference. That's the inconceivable nature of Krishna and his potencies. So now what happens, now the question arises, what is the need of the Anand aspect of the Lord to make itself separated and uh, external to his self? The answer is given by Srila Jiva Goswami. Actually, the Jnanis, the Monists, the Advaitvadins, those who are very fond of considering themselves one with the Absolute Truth, because they have no notion of devotion unto the lotus feet of the Lord and because they have rather disregarded, discarded and because they rather disrespect the whole principle and the whole notion of devotional service, because they rather dismiss the whole notion of devotional service, that is why the Jnanis rather put forth a challenge in front of the devotees circle. And they say that if the Vedas have propounded at one hand in the beginning of Ishavasya Upanishad of Krishna Yajur Veda Sanghita, Ishopanishad. In the beginning of Ishopanishad, the Vedas have propounded Om Purna Madaha Purna Midam Purna Purna Mudachyate Purna Sya Purna Madaya Purna Meva Vashishyate Om. That that transcendental absolute truth is complete and all the emanations which emanate from his transcendental self are also complete. Now, the Jnanis put forth the question, if the transcendental absolute truth, Parabrahma, Paramatma, Param Tattva, if that absolute truth is complete within himself, then why he has to rely for his satisfaction on his devotees and on his associates which are different from his personality and whose existence is different from his existence. That makes the Atma Ram, Aptakam and Purnakam, 
परम परिपूर्ण श्री कृष्ण राधर अपूर्ण एंड अखिल दैट मेक्स अखिल कृष्ण खिल दैट मेक्स इनकम्प्लीट एप्सोल्यूट ट्रूथ कंप्लीट एप्सोल्यूट ट्रूथ इनकम्प्लीट टू से that shri krishna becomes satisfied to say that the absolute truth becomes satisfied by uh, tasting the devotional mellows and the affection found within the heart of his devotees that means shri krishna has to depend for his satisfaction on other objects who are different from his existence and that will make shri krishna's atma ramatva that will make shri krishna's self satisfied position rather completely distorted so the gyani say that Uh, in the principle of devotional service in the concept of devotional line in the concept of devotional line which bhakti marg vichar dhara in the concept of devotional line the absolute truth is rather made incomplete because he has to uh, depend on his satisfaction on his devotees so our conception the conception of gyan marg that the absolute truth and the living entities are one and the same and there is no no question of devotional service arises because there is no separate existence of the living entities from the absolute no question of survivor and served principle sevya and sevak sambandh arises so our principle is the best because in our principle according to our theory the absolute truth doesn't have to become incomplete and depend on somebody else's somebody else's uh, affection for his satisfaction now the jim go swami has given mouth and teeth breaking answer to the gyanis in his bhakti sandarbha and prati sandarbha jiva goswami says and without without understanding this principle one will not be able to understand the reality of devotional path this is the most fundamental concept of devotional service which we have to become acquainted initially preliminary and only then the uh, further aspects of devotional service can be properly understood or comprehended so the for the foremost basic and fundamental principle of devotional line is that shri krishna remains self satisfied even though he is tasting the affection he is the objective he is the objective he is the object of love of his devotees although he is tasting the affection and the love given by his devotees his satisfaction remains self dependent and not dependent on others he is still considered atmaram aptakam and purna and incomplete and, and he doesn't have to rely on his satisfaction on others how jim goswami says that krishna is atmaram the anand aspect of krishna's personality as long it as long as it stays within krishna's personality it gives krishna pleasure from inward from interior but krishna doesn't become fully satisfied with that pleasure the so called atma ramatva of krishna the so called self satisfied position of krishna that krishna receives the transcendental uh, paramount bliss which is inward to his personality which is in his personality that transcendental bliss shri krishna is tasting <coughs> but he is not still uh, feeling himself fully satisfied so krishna because he doesn't uh, because he doesn't consider himself fully satisfied in order to make krishna fully satisfied the same parmananda the same transcendental paramount bliss or felicity the anand aspect which is inside krishna's personality makes itself manifest outside krishna's personality as ahladini shakti or as shrimati radhika and then ahladini shakti who is none, none other than shrimati radhika that shrimati radhika or ahladini shakti is partial fragmental portion becomes known as krishna prem or prema bhakti prem or prema bhakti is a faculty of ahladini shakti prema bhakti is actually a product of ahladini shakti that's why by the performance of sadhan bhakti when ahladini shakti gets manifest in the heart of a devotee then that ahladini shakti which is manifest in the heart of a devotee becomes known as prema bhakti or krishna prem and that krishna prem which is none other than a transformation of ahladini shakti that krishna prem again satisfies shri krishna so who is the real cause of set of krishna's satisfaction is it the devotee or is it krishna's ahladini shakti if ahladini shakti is not present in devotee's heart can krishna become satisfied by reciprocating with his devotee i don't think so 
That is why the devotees are humble because they are thinking that it is the portion of Ahradini Shakti, Shrimati Radhika, known as Krishna Prem, that Ahradini Shakti has given to us, which is making Krishna satisfied. We have no capacity to make Krishna satisfied. Because we are infinitesimal in our nature. Krishna is infinite. We are having just a partial uh, portion or we are just having a small fragmental particle of Anand within our Swarup. Chitkan Anand. Chitkan Swarup Jeeva possesses Chitkan Anand. This is how Bhakti Vinod Thakur explains in Jaiva Dharma. The fragmental, minute, infinitesimal living entity whose size is not more than one ten thousandth part of a tip of a hair. Keshagrashata Bhagasya Shatada Kalpita Secha as the Shvita Shvata Upanishad puts it. That tiny living entity in his Swarupa, in his tiny nature or personality, he only possesses a very, the smallest part of transcendental paramount bliss. How can that smallest part of transcendental paramount bliss make Shri Krishna, who is infinite, satisfied? Because Shri Krishna is infinite, Sarva Vyapi Vibhu, omnipresent, his Ananda is also infinite. How can we make Shri Krishna, who is already possessing infinite bliss, satisfied by our finite particle of bliss. That is not possible. That is why the living entities cannot take pride. Even the devotees who have become perfect on the path of devotional <coughs> service, they cannot take pride and think that we are satisfying Krishna. It is rather the internal potency of Shri Krishna present within our hearts, which is satisfying Shri Krishna. That's why the devotees are always humble. What capability do we have of satisfying Krishna? It is Srimati Radhika or, or, or Ahradini Shakti, who is making herself manifest in the hearts of variety of devotees and through the agency of devotees who is making Krishna satisfied. It is not, it's not us who are, who are making Krishna satisfied. That's Krishna Prem which is very much palatable to Sri Krishna and in order to taste that Krishna Prem, Krishna becomes attracted and stays in the heart of devotee. Why? Because Krishna Prem, transformation of Ahaladini Shakti stays in the heart of a devotee. Therefore, Krishna also wants to reside in the heart of a devotee. That's why Rupa Goswami says that uh, in Nectar of Devotion, um, um, illuminating on the six characteristics, illuminating on the six qualities uh, that the devotional service has. Devotional service or bhakti has three stages. Pure devotional service, Shuddha Bhakti, which is only aimed at satisfying Shri Krishna, is divided threefold. Sadhana Bhakti stage, on the higher than that Bhava Bhakti stage, and the last stage is Prema Bhakti stage. So, the Prema Bhakti stage, which is the goal, which is the aim, which is the target, which is the objective of Sadhana Bhakti stage, that goal, that Pancham Purushar, that fifth goal of human life, discarding the other four extraneous goals uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, insignificant goals of so called Dharma, Art, Kama, and Moksha, the Pancham Purushar Prem, which is the only real goal which is the only significant goal, this Pancham Purusharth Prem is rather having six qualities. And among the six qualities, two qualities are Prema Bhakti's own quality. Like, there are six qualities. Klesha Gni Shubhada, Muksha Laguta Krit Sudur Labha, Sandrananda Visheshatma Shri Krishna Karshini Chasa. So Klesha Gni and Shubhada, that means removing all types of distress, and giving all types of you know, all types of auspiciousness. These are the two qualities which are the symptoms of Sadhana Bhakti stage. Bhava Bhakti stage has these two preceding qualities along with its two extra special qualities known as uh, Moksha Lagutakrit and Sudur Labha. Bhava Bhakti is very rare, Sudur Labha very rarely obtained and it, upon the arising, upon the awakening of Bhava Bhakti in the heart, devotee starts considering uh, the Dharma, Ard, Kama and Moksha completely insignificant. All sorts of mundane, mundane pleasure completely insignificant, including the five types of liberations, devotee considers insignificant. Just when Bhava Bhakti arises in the heart, that happens. Moksha Lagutakrit, it makes Moksha liberation appear very ins insignificant. Moksha Lagutakrit Sudur Labha and Prema Bhakti stage has these four preceding qualities of Moksha Lagutakrit, Sudur Labha, Kreshakni and uh, Shubhada and it, had, it, and it has its own two special qualities, specific two special qualities known as Shri Krishna Karshini and Sandrananda Vishesh Atma. 
Sandranan Vishesh Atma means Prema Bhakti is condensed form of Ahladini. That's why Jiva Goswami says in Tattva Sandarbh that uh, Ahladini Saar Prem and Madanakya Prema Saar. Chaitanya Charitamrita actually Krishna Das Kaviraj says that the essence of Ahladini potency just like the essence of milk is condensed milk also known as half and half. That's how they call it in United States. I don't know what here, but they call it condensed milk or half and half milk. So the condensed form of milk is half and half and the condensed form of half and half is the peda. So in the same way, the condensed form of Ahladini Shakti is Krishna Prem and the condensed form of Krishna Prem is Madhanakya Mahabhav and Madhanakya Mahabhav when makes itself manifest into a personal figure then it becomes known as Shrimati Radhika. Madhanakya Mahabhav is none other than Shrimati Radhika personified. She is the personification of Madhanakya Mahabhav. That's the essence of Ahaladini Shakti. Now, Krishna Prem is the essence of Ahaladini. Right? So, uh, Sandrananda Vishesh Atma. That's why, therefore, the symptom of Prema Bhakti stage is that Prema Bhakti is full of condensed Anand. Sandrananda Vishesh Atma means condensed pleasure. And Shri Krishna Karshini, only Prema Bhakti has a special characteristic of attracting Shri Krishna. Akarshini means just like uh, opposite part of a magnet, opposite or, uh, part of a magnet um, uh, attracts and forcibly brings in its proximity and vicinity another opposite part or, or its counterpart. Just like opposite part of a magnet brings forth its counterpart. Uh, forcibly into its proximity and vicinity, into its near, nearness. In the same way, the Ahladini Shakti's condensed essence, Prem, which is present in devotee's heart, that Prem attracts Shri Krishna into the heart of a devotee. So, that is why uh, the Prema Bhakti stage has been considered to be Krishna Karshin. Only Prema Bhakti has this special power of attracting Shri Krishna and binding and confining Shri Krishna within the heart of his devotee. Therefore, in Durvasa and Ambrish Prasanga also Krishna says, Narayan says in ninth canto of Bhagavatam that Aham Bhakta Paradhino Hya Swatantra Iva Dvija Sadhu Vir Grasta Hridayo Bhakta Iva Bhakta Jana Priyaha. I am completely subordinate to my devotees, being subservient to him. Why? Because they have captured me and confined, they have made me confined within their hearts. Sadhu Vir Grasta Hridayo. <coughs> And then also Shushrushu Vistakshana in Bhagavatam Dharma Prochita Kaitavatra, the ending part of that verse, Shushrushu Vistakshana, that as soon as devotee uh, wants to hear Bhagavat Katha, Krishna becomes bound in his heart. And then also it is said that Bhakti Sutra Parantaha in the Padma Puran. Bhakti Sutra Parantaha means that the Lord is bound by the ropes of devotion, that the ropes of Prema Bhakti, not the rope of Bhav Bhakti and Sadhana Bhakti, but, but, but by the rope of Prema Bhakti, because at on the stages of Bhav and Sadhana, Krishna doesn't become attracted and confined in the heart. Only on the stage of Prema that happens. That's a special unique characteristics of Prema Bhakti only, Krishna Karshini. So, that Prema Bhakti is actually the cause of Krishna's being attracted to his devotee. That is why and Prema Bhakti is no, none other than Ahladini Shakti. It's just a condensed transformation of Ahladini. And Ahladini Shakti is none other than the integrated part of Krishna's personality. Just like heat and fire potencies are integrated part of fire, Ahladini Shakti is also integrated part of Krishna's personality. Therefore, Krishna Prem is also integrated part of Krishna's personality. Therefore, Krishna becomes satisfied depending on the integrated part of his personality and not depending on some other living entity. Although that living entity, I mean to say the devotee, can be considered as a base or as a shelter of holding that Krishna Prem within, it, within his heart. The heart of a living entity, the heart of a devotee may be considered, considered a vessel or container which contains or holds the nectar of Krishna Prem, but the vessel can, can satisfy the person who is thirsty if the vessel is devoid of uh, nectarian juice, it is rather the nectarian juice which, which satisfies, vessel is just a container. In the same way, Krishna doesn't become satisfied by the living entities who are infinitesimal in nature and who are having only a fragmental particle of ananda in their identity. Krishna, who is having infinite ananda in his identity, will become satisfied by them? Huh. Impossible. But Krishna rather becomes satisfied by that prem which is Ahladini Saar, 
which is condensed essence of Ahladini and that Prem which is integrated part of his own personality and that Prem which is just contained by the vessel like or container like hearts of the devotees. That's the only relation. Therefore, Jiva Goswami gives one very nice example. That's why now the Jnani's argument that Krishna becomes dependent on other living entities for his satisfaction. And thus, the uh, complete nature of absolute truth becomes distorted and incomplete. Purnatva of Parabrahma Paramatma becomes rather distorted, perverted and Parabrahma Paramatma becomes apurna according to the concept of devo devotional path. That argument put forth by the Jnanis, put forth by the monists become completely refuted. And that is why Jiva Goswami gives one very nice practical example to explain this. How? A flute. So, the air which is, con which is contained within a person's abdomen. There are ten types of airs within human beings within the human bodies and um, those ten types of air um, there is one specific air saman vayu, yan vayu, udan vayu etc there are ten types of airs and out of those ten types of air there is one spe specific type of air known as udan vayu which stays within the abdomen and that udan vayu which stays which inhabits within the uh, abdomen or the abdominal region that is the air which is used while speaking. All the different types of 10 airs present in the body have different functions. So the abdominal air, Udan Vayu, has a specific function that it's been utilized when the act of conversation takes place. So when a person starts speaking, now the, what, what is the speech? Speech is none other than, what is speech? The, the speech is defined in Nyai Darshan. In the darshan of Nyai, dealing with the law, uh, philosophy of Nyai, Nyai darshan defines speech as being the conjunction or uh, union of voice box with the uh, abdominal air. When the abdominal air, Udan Vayu, hits the voice box, the speech is created. Udan Vayu comes up upwards, it turns upwards and hits the voice box, then the speech is created. And the speech is more reformed when it touches the palate. Talu, when it touches um, the palate, when it touches the teeth, when it touches the lips, and when it touches the tongue. And then finally, when it comes out, that's the most reformed form of speech. So, the abdominal air is actually the cause of speech. The ingredient cause of speech is the abdominal air. Upadan Karan of Vani. Ab ingredient cause of speech is the abdominal air known as Sudan Vani. But that abdominal air, as long as it stays within the abdomen, it doesn't charm, it doesn't enchant, it doesn't entertain the personality or the person containing that air within his body. But as soon as that abdominal air comes out from the mouth and the lips of that person and turns into a whistling sound, it becomes quite more enchanting. But when that person holds a flute in his proximity, uh, attaches that flute to his mouth and when that person uh, puts or fills the different holes of that bamboo flute within the same abdominal air that he possesses and when the abdominal air goes or enters into the holes of that bamboo flute and then again comes out and then again enters the ear of that person, that abdominal air which is transformed into very sweet melodies becomes very much enchanting. In the same way Jiva Goswami says, as long as the Anand aspect of the Lord, <laughs> can you get the relation now? As long as the Anand aspect of the Lord stays within the Lord's personality, or uh, yes, it's not so much enchanting, but when it gets transformed, or it, it enters into the heart of his devotees and then again comes out, it becomes more enchanting to the Lord. That is why, that is the whole, that is why, that, that is why the Ahladini Shakti or Srinati Radhika, the personification of Ahladini Shakti, she, there is a necessity, necessity arises for her to make herself simultaneously present within Lord's personality as the Ananda aspect and to make herself separate simultaneously as Srinati Radhika, extraneous to his self. That is why Radha Krishna Pranaya Vikriti Hi Ahladi Nishakti Rasma Dekat Mana Vati Bhuvipura Deha Bhedam Gatautau. Swarup Damodar Goswami 
uh, reveals the internal identity of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that he is Radha and Krishna combined. But then in that shloka which is quoted in Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila, first chapter invocation by Krishna Das Kaviraj, originally composed by Swarup Damodar Goswami, Radha Krishna Pranay Vikriti Ahaladi Nishakti Rasman, Ekat Manau, that shloka explains that Krishna and Radha are one soul just appearing in two different performs because one is the integrated potency and the other is the potent principle one is the fire and other uh, and the other is the heat and the light energy of that fire so we can understand the relationship of internal potency with that now the coward damsels of Vrindavan they are the internal potencies of the Lord that's why in Brahma Sahita Brahma says while praying to Krishna Ananda Chinmaya Rasa Pratibhavita Abhista Bhirya Evani Janupataya Kalapihi Goloka eva nivasati akhilatma bhuto govindamadi purusham tamaham hajami Ananda chinmaya rasaprati mahavita vistabhirya eva nijarupataya kalabhi Shrimati Radhika and all the different subjective plenary portions of Shrimati Radhika I mean to say the Kaya Vyuhas Shrimati Radhika expands herself into Shri Lalita, Shri Vishagha, all the Ashtasakis, eight companions and she also expands herself into Nitya Siddh Manjaris like Rupa Manjari Rati Manjari, Vilas Manjari, Anang Manjari, Lavang Manjari, Kasturi Manjari, Nayanamani Manjari, all these Manjaris, all these maid servants of Srimati Radhika and the eight principal companions, Sakhis of Srimati Radhika, they are none other than Srimati Radhika's non differentiated expansion. They are Swansh, they are Kaya view of Srimati Radhika. So, what happens is that uh, Srimati Radhika who is the Ananda Shakti personified, Ananda Chinmay Rasaprati Bhavitavis. She becomes manifest into all these other Kaya Viho forms like the Ashtasakis and the Manjuris. And together all, they try to satisfy Shri Krishna. That means Ahaladini Shakti makes herself manifest into variety of personal forms of different Manjuris and different Sakis. And those varieties of forms, which are none other than Ahaladini Shakti's different transformations, they in turn try to make Krishna satisfied. Now, Adiras or Shringaras, as we were saying, is divided twofold. Swakya and Parkya. Swakya, Parkya and uh, Kanyaka. Now we are again coming back to the original invocatory verse. <coughs> so, Adiras or the original mellow Shringar is divided uh, threefold. Now, the, why it is called Adiras is because from Shringar become, become, becomes manifest all the other four Rasas like the Shantaras, Dasyaras, Sakhiras and Vatsalyaras and all the seven secondary rasas who, which are the seven secondary rasas? the seven secondary rasas are Hasya Adbhuta Veera Karuna Raudra Vibhat Sabhaya Panchavita Bhakti Gauna Sapta Rasahaya the mellow of laughter Hasya the mellow of wonder Adbhut the mellow of chivalry heroism Veer Ras the mellow of compassion Karuna Ras the mellow of ro uh, anger Raudra Ras the mellow of ghastliness Vibhat Saras the mellow of fear Bhayanak Ras Together all these 11 mellows, Shringar on one side and the 11 mellows on one side. 7 uh, secondary mellows and the 4 principal mellows, that means 11 on one side and Shringar on one side. Shringar is the original mellow from all, all of these other uh, 11 mellows have become manifest. So that's why it is known as Adigas. Now the Shringar is divided threefold hmm? uh, into Swakya, Parkya and Kanyaka. Kanyaka means that conjugal love now conjugal love means one lover is needed two lovers are needed hmm. one is male and another is female there cannot be any other relationship in the transcendence in the material world everything goes on but in the transcendence there is no other relationship except for the male and female relationship hmm. so the only male existing in transcendental world is Shri Krishna and all the females existing are the living entities whether those living entities are products of marginal potency or internal potency the products of internal potency are the ashta sakhis of shrimati radhika and ruprati manjari and the other nitya siddha manjaris and nand yashoda shridam subal madhumangal raktak patrak etc these are nitya siddha parshadas of shri krishna they are products of internal potency whereas if the living entities after the performance of sadhan bhakti if they enter into Golok Vrindavan and become Krishna's associate in any of the five relationships then they are known as sadhana siddha parikar not nitya siddha parikar and sadhana siddha parikars sadhana siddha parshadas are always products of marginal potency and never the products of internal that's what makes sadhana siddha parshad different from nitya siddha 
So right now we are talking about the Nityas and the Parshadas who are different transformations of Ahradini or internal potency of Krishna. The Nityas and the Parshadas, what happens? Uh, okay, so only male existing is Shri Krishna and all the other associates, whether they are Nityas in the Parshad or Sadhanas in the Parshad, are female in identity. They might, they, they, they have, they can have the male forms externally, but in identity they are female. All associates of Shri Krishna, all devotees of Krishna in transcendental world, whether they are products of marginal potency, Sadhana Siddha Parshad, all products of internal potency, Nityas in the Parshan, they are all female in identity. And some associates of Krishna, although they are female in identity, they assume a male form, like Sridam, Subal, Madhumangal, all the coward boy for boyfriends of Krishna, and all the other um, servants of Krishna, like Raktak, Patrak, Chitrak, mother, father of Krishna, like Nand, Yashoda, they all are female in identity because only Krishna is the potent principle, as we say. All the rest are his energies, whether marginal potency or internal potency, never doesn't matter. They are all potencies. They are female in identity. That's why, I, uh, constitutionally speaking, all the associates of Krishna are female, Krishna being the sole male, and the relationship of male and female. Now, those um, uh, associates of Krishna, all are female, that's the general rule. But among those associates of Krishna, those who are especially disposed of the conjugal affection for Sri Krishna, they are of three types. Because there are three types of conjugal. And they are embodied in a transcendental female form. And they are of three types. They have female bodies and they are of three types. Huh? Parkiya, Swakiya and Kanyaka. Kanyaka means uh, that relationship which a virgin unmarried girl has with another virgin unmarried boy. That is known as Kanyaka Bhav. The relationship that a married wife and husband they have, that is known as Swakiya Bhav. That's another form of conjugal. And the relationship that, it, uh, uh, that a uh, woman or a lady who has become married legally to a particular person, his hus her husband, that wedded wife, if she has an extramarital relationship with another paramour, then that is known as parkia. So the relationship that the cowhood damsels of Vrindavan have with Shri Krishna is of the latter type, parkia bha. And the cowhood damsels of Vrindavan, they have been married legally by husbands, but those husbands are also expansions of Shri Krishna. They have not been married to anyone else other than Shri Krishna, but because those husbands are not becoming, becoming manifest in the same form as Krishna becomes manifest. Assuming different form, Krishna uh, uh, manifests different expansions, different, uh, endowed with different external forms and ways of behavior and ways of uh, demeanor, etc. And therefore, both in the conception of Krishna and in the conception of gopis, they are thinking, gopis are thinking that we are married not to Krishna, but to some other uh, person. And Krishna is also thinking likewise, that gopis are not married to my expansions, but to some other person. Why they are thinking like this? Because the yoga maya potency, in order to make the paramour love arise, the yoga maya potency covers the knowledge of both Krishna and the Gaur damsels. Gaur damsels do not know that the husbands to whom we, we are married are expansions of Krishna. Neither Krishna knows that they are my expansions. They are both in the mood that, oh, Gopi is thinking that uh, Krishna is uh, a paramour lover. He is Upupati. He is not our Pati. He is Upupati. Hmm? We don't have any direct marital relationship with him. And Krishna also thinks, I don't have a direct marital relationship with the Gopis. Just in order to make the paramour love arise, Yoga Maya covers the whole consciousness of both the gopis and Krishna and why the paramour love is needed because in the paramour relationship even it is seen in the material world that even in the, then what to speak of the spiritual the, in the paramour relationship the, the bliss is more condensed than in the marital relationship that's why the best way that Krishna can become satisfied is not through the wedded love but is through the paramour that's why wedded love is found in Dwarka, uh, Mathura, Ayodhya and Vaikunt but the Parkiya Bhav is only found, the Paramour is only found in Sri Vrindavan. Now that Paramour love uh, has again two divisions. Uh, Grita Sneha and Madhu Sneha. So the group of Chandravali, that is the rival group to Srimati Radhika. We are coming back finally. The group of Chandravali, 
which is the rival group to Srimati Radhika and the group of uh, Palika which is representing a neutral group to Srimati Radhika, Tatastha Paksha and Vipaksha of Srimati Radhika respectively. Both of these two groups have specific type of paramour love for Krishna known as Madhusneha as, as Rupa Goswami explains in Ujjwala Nilmani. Ujjwala Nilmani is an appendix of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. It is continuation. So as Rupa Goswami explains in the Sthai Bhav division, Sthai Bhav Prakaran of Ujjwala Nilmani, Madhusneha uh, or Gritasneha is a special type of paramour affection possessed by the rival group and the neutral group. Suhrit, uh, I mean the Vipaksha and the Tatastha Paksha. So, all the gopis headed by Chandravali who are in rival group, Tatastha Paksha, and all the uh, gopis headed by Palika who are in the Tatastha Paksha or the neutral group, they are all possessing Gritasneha type of affection, Gritasneha type of paramour. Gritasneha means paramour love which is like butter, smooth and soft like butter. But there are two other groups of cowherd damsels existing in paramour conjugal love which are known as Suhrita Paksha and Swapaksha. So Suhrita Paksha is group friendly to Srimati Radhika and Swapaksha is Radhika's own group. So Suhrita Paksha is represented, is headed by Gopi known as Shyamala. Hmm? That's why Akila Rasamrita Murtihi Prasirima Ruchi Rutta Tarka Pali Kalita Shyama Lalito. Suhrita Paksha or the friendly group of Radhika is headed by, the well-wishing group of Radhika is headed by a gopi known as Shyama or Shyamala. And uh, Srimati Radhika's own group Swapaksha is headed by Srimati Lalita. Lalita is the chief leader of Radha's group. Radha is rather, there are only two Naikas, there are only two um, uh, heroines in Vrindavan. There is one hero, Krishna, and that also of Dhir Lalita type. As Rupa Goswami explains in Nectar of Devotion later part, four types of Nayakas or heroes. Dhir Lalit, Dhir Prashant, Dhirodhat and Dhirodhatta. So Krishna in Kurukshetra speaking Bhagavad Gita is Dhir Prashant Nayak. Krishna in Dwarka pastimes is Dhirodhatta Nayak. Krishna when fighting to demons is Dhirodhat Nayak, arrogant. Uddhat means arrogant. Udatta means generous. Prashanta means grave. And Krishna in Vrindavan, especially performing pastimes with gopis in Paramore, is Dhir Lalit Nayak. Uh, very careless, carefree uh, uh, hero, hero who always uh, uh, remains in uh, complete bliss, happiness, and who is full of jokes. Uh, his, his nature is that the uh, Dhir Lalit Nayak has been uh, explained by Rupa Goswami in Bhakti Rasamri Sindhu as that hero who is very playful uh, by speaking different types of jokes and uh, different types of uh, uh, flickery uh, movements. So that is Dhir Lalit Nayak, that is the Krishna of Vrindavan. So Dhir Lalit Nayak is the only, Dhir Lalit Krishna is the only hero in Vrindavan, whereas there are two heroines, Chandravali and Srimati Radhika, two principal heroines, they are the two only heroines and these two heroines have their followers. That means that there are two different parties. Huh? And then there is, so the friendly group to Chandravali's group is known as um, Tatastha Paksha. The neutral group means, it neutral group is neutral to Radhika. That means if chaos happens, if quarrel happens, if quarrel occurs between Radhika's group and Chandravali's group, the neutral group will remain neutral. But that neutral group is friendly towards Chandravali. <laughs> it is friendly towards Chandravali, but it remains neutral during the choral time. So also, the friendly group, Suhrit Paksha, headed by Shyamala, is friendly towards Radhika, but it is neutral towards Chandravali. You understand, you understand right? The Tatastha Paksha, which Rupa Goswami calls Tatastha Paksha, is Tatastha for Radhika, but Suhrit for Chandravali. And the Suhrit Paksha of Radhika is Suhrit for Radhika and Tatastha for Chandravali. That is the interrelation. These two groups in between, they remain complete neutral. But they have friendly relationships with, with uh, their respective heroines, Chandravali or Radhika. And then these two heroines have their own groups, own parties. So Vipaksha, 
Chandravali's own group is Chandravali Swapaksha. Chandra, it is Chandravali's Swapaksha, but it is Vipaksha of Radhika. And Radhika's Swapaksha, headed by Lalita, is Radhika's own group, Swapaksha, but it is Vipaksha for Chandravali. That is how we have to consider here. So now what happens is that Chandravali's friendly group and Chandravali's own group, they are possessing Gritasneha, paramour affection like butter. But Srimati Radhika's own group, headed by Lalita and Srimati Radhika's friendly group headed by Shyamala they are, and Srimati Radhika herself also they are possessing a type of paramour love known as Madhusneha like honey that's the difference the essential difference in their characteristics and the difference between Madhusneha and Gritasneha has been explained by Rupa Goswami and Jol Nilmani but we will not go to the, in the interior aspects of that matter so basically the thing is Madhusneha is more sweet and tasty and palatable to Krishna. Butter may be soft, may be nutritious, may be giving strength, but it is not as sweet as honey. So that is the essential difference. And the reason is Madhiyatabhav. That, that's the reason Rupa Goswami gives. Madhiyatabhav. The feeling of affection that Krishna is mine. Not that I am Krishna's, but that Krishna is mine. Krishna belongs to me. Madhiyatabhav. Not Taniyatabhav. Madhiyatabhav. That Krishna is my property. That feeling that Krishna is my property is not as condensed in Chandravali's Gritasneha as it is in Radha's and her group's Madhusneha towards Radhika. That is what makes Srimati Radhika's and her friendly groups and her own group's love for Krishna more palatable to Krishna than the, the Chandravali's love, her friendly group's love and her own group's love to Shri Krishna. That is why these are the four groups. Now what Rupa Goswami says, Akhila Rasamrita Murtihi Prasimara Ruchi Balihi Krishna has brought under his own control Friendly group of Chandravali and Radhi and Chandravali's own group. That means he is not controlled by them, but he rather controls them. Prasimara Ruchinutta Taraka Palihi. Karita Shyama Lalito. Whereas Shri Krishna makes the friendly group of Srimati Radhika, Suhrit Paksha, and Srimati Radhika's own group, Swapaksha, headed by Lalita, his own. Atmasat. Jo Shri Krishna. Uh, uh, Chandravali ke paksh, Chandravali ke swapaksh aur Chandravali ke suhrit paksh ko apni adhid rakhte hain. Parantu jo Shri Krishna, Shrimati Radhika ke swapaksh aur Shrimati Radhika ke suhrit paksh ko apna bana lete hain, atmasat karte hain, apna bana lete hain. Kalita Shyama Lalito means Shri Krishna makes Radha's own group and Radha's friendly group his own. That means he places them on an equal status. Whereas he controls Chandravali's own group and Chandravali's friendly group. That means he, he places himself as superior to them. But towards, uh, towards Radha's own group and Radha's friendly group, Krishna doesn't become placed on top of them, but rather Krishna stays on an equal platform. Krishna makes them his very own. But towards Srimati Radhika, third different type of uh, behavior that Krishna expresses. Kalita Shyama Lalito Radha Prayan Vidhur Jaya. Rupa Goswami says that he is equal. He places himself equal. Krishna places himself equal to Radha's friendly group and Radha's own group. He places Chandravali's own group and Chandravali's friendly group inferior to him, being their controller. But he makes himself subordinate to Srimati Radhika. Radha Priyan Vidur Jayati and that transcendental moon of Shri Dham Vrindavan. Uh, may he be all victorious, all glorious. Thus ends the invocatory verse of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 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 Hare Hare. We have passed our time limit. Uh, any short questions can be taken. Yes. Yes. How did uh, this uh, love aspect of Krishna is different from the Ananda aspect of the Jiva? Because such is Ananda, means even the Jiva, they, uh, the constitutional position, or you can say the Sarup of Jiva, is such is Ananda. Yes. So how this Ananda is different, which comes as a Aradhana Sakti of Krishna? Yes. You see, the particle of bliss that living entity possesses, yes. whether he is performing devotional service or not, he always possesses. Whether he is in human uh, species or any other species of conditioning, conditioned life, the particle of bliss that he always possesses in his nature, 
that particle of place comes from uh, uh, Krishna's Swarupanand. It doesn't come from Ahradini Shakti. That's the difference. Swarupanand means the oh, we have already talked about the aspect of bliss that stays within Krishna's personality. That is known as Swarupanand. And the bliss that Sri Krishna receives by, by reciprocating with his <coughs> devotees and by reciprocating with Srimati Radharani is known as Swarup Shaktyanand or Ahladini Anand. It's known as Swarup Shaktyanand or Ahladini Shakti. <coughs> so the particle of bliss that, uh, that living entity possesses within, within his heart uh, since the time that he is existing, that particle of bliss, bliss is actually coming from Krishna's uh, aspect of pleasure which is in his personality. That is not coming from the separated Ahladini Shakti. That is why Krishna doesn't, doesn't need that Anand. He already has infinite Anand within his self already. Still he remains dissatisfied and therefore that Anand aspect uh, uh, manifests itself separate to Sri Krishna's personality as Srimadhi Radhika to fully satisfy Krishna. So if Krishna doesn't become satisfied by the already existing unlimited Ananda that he has in his own internal identity, then why would he need a particle of his own internal pleasure given to a living entity for satisfaction? That doesn't appeal to the mind. So living entity, the pleasure he has is particle of Swarupa Ananda. It is not particle of Swarupa Shakti Ananda. That's the difference. What happens when living entity performs sadhana bhakti and at that time when living entity is given prema bhakti that prema bhakti is particle of swarupa shakti anand and that is what makes krishna satisfied swarupanand or the particle of swarupanand doesn't become krishna, doesn't make krishna satisfied swarupa shakti anand or a particle of swarupa shakti anand makes krishna satisfied that is the difference so swarupa shakti anand is Adini Shakti and Swarup Anand is the Anand aspect found within his personality. That's the difference. Yes. Then uh, means uh, uh, it's mean that uh, uh, means the love for Krishna, which uh, we say that is dormant in the living entity. Yes. Means we get it from uh, when when we perform bhakti, when we do sadhana yeah. bhakti, then we get it from yeah. outside. Actually, what happens? The reason why it is said that the love for uh, Krishna is dormant within <laughs> our hearts. Is, is because we have a natural loving propensity in this material world. We can love either a material object or we can love Krishna. We have that propensity of loving. But Krishna Prem is a very specific sub substance. Krishna Prem is actually received from outside by the performance of Sadhana Bhakti. Nitya Siddhasya Bhavasya Prakatya Hriti Satyata. That is how Rupa Goswami puts it. That Krishna Prem, which is eternally existing, but which is existing outside, not inside ourselves, that Krishna Prem is received by the grace of Ahaladini Shakti. When Ahaladini Shakti decides, oh, now this devotee is qualified to receive Krishna Prem. Krishna Prem is an essence of Ahaladini Shakti. So when Ahaladini Shakti decides that now this devotee is uh, eligible to receive Krishna Prem, then she infuses. Krishna Prem automatically within the heart of that devotee. But when it is said that the, this uh, love is dormant in our hearts, that love doesn't actually uh, mean the specific Krishna Prem that we are talking about that is received by the grace of Ahladini. That love is the loving propensity that we are talking about. Loving propensity is there. Loving propensity is there. If loving propensity is not there, then even if Ahladini Shakti will give us that Krishna Prem, that Krishna Prem will remain incompatible. One example I can give you. How? Um, in the material world, suppose we have a plug, right? We have a plug which has three pins or two pins. But if we don't have a socket, how will that plug work? So loving propensity is like a socket. And Krishna Prem is the plug. Actual Krishna Prem is like the plug. So, I mean, plug needs a socket. If, if it wants to work, plug, plug needs a socket. So, Krishna Prem is the essential object or plug. 
but it needs a socket and that socket is the loving propensity which living entity has whether he is a devotee of the lord or not or not devotee he has in all circumstances he has living propensity if he is not devotee of the lord then he will love uh, some other mortal human being or some other living entity so that loving propensity is misused or exploited it can it, it is it is misdirected it can be directed towards a proper goal proper proper goal but it is misdirected but only by that loving propensity nothing happens that is why even at the stage of sadhan bhakti devotees have love for krishna isn't it if we don't have any love for krishna then we will not be engaged in the devotional service at all we have some love for krishna but that love is not the same as krishna prem which is a transformation of ahladini shakti that transformation of ahladini shakti krishna prem will only be received once we become perfect in our sadhana bhakti that is why loving propensity is there but the actual krishna prem we have to get it by the grace of ahladini shakti from outside that's why loving propensity makes krishna prem compatible ahladini shakti can give us krishna prem but if we don't have the receptacle to contain that krishna prem within our hearts that krishna prem cannot do anything even if it comes within our heart that can it, it, it cannot function so we have um, uh, it, it, it's the compatibility mode is actually known as the loving propensity that is dormant within the heart of a living entity if the if if loving propensity is not there at all in the heart of a living entity krishna prem will not be act able to act actually um, there are many uh, mundane examples which can be given here yeah yeah and there are also mundane examples uh, mundane machinery um, examples of mundane machinery or yeah, other blood, machines like compatibility yeah, blood, yeah. life saving blood cannot be taken unless you have a similar compatibility in the blood yes yes so that loving propensity that the acharyas have talking about which is dormant within the heart of every living entity is just a compatibility which is which with me which needs to be there if we want to properly uh, 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 you know, contain Krishna Prem, and if we want to make the Krishna Prem functionalize, functionalize, uh, function properly, we need the we need that compatibility. So that's the only thing. Otherwise, that dormant love that we have in our in our hearts, that's not the same as that Krishna Prem, which is the transformation of Aharadini Shakti. You know why? Because if Krishna Prem was already there, then Krishna Prem is so Aharadini Shakti. because ahladini shakti krishna prem is ahladini shakti krishna prem is not marginal or external krishna prem is krishna prem is internal potency ahladini is internal so marginal can be subdued by external but how can internal be subdued by external so we are marginal we are prone to subjugation of external potency we can be covered by maya but how can krishna prem which is ahladini shakti which is internal potency be covered by maya so if we say that krishna prem which is the essence of ahladini shakti was is already in our heart even though we are not devotee of krishna then how maya can dare to cover that internal potency that particle of internal potency maya can never cover internal potency on godhead shri krishna these are the only two things which maya can never cover maya cannot cover either shri krishna who is the shaktiman or parmatma who is portion of shaktiman localized portion or impersonal brahman neither of these three can be covered by maya impersonal brahman cannot be covered by maya nor the parmatma feature can be covered by maya nor the bhagwan aspect can be covered by maya and not the swayam bhagwan original all the aspects of the energetic principle cannot be covered by maya so also among the three potencies that krishna possesses internal marginal and external external only internal cannot be covered by the external whereas marginal is prone to be covered by external so if we say that krishna prem krishna prem is ontologically speaking internal potency so if krishna prem was already within our hearts it the question will never arise of our becoming conditioned in the material world because krishna prem is so effulgent that external potency maya can never cover it it can never cover internal potency nowhere in the shastra it is mentioned that maya has power to either cover bhagwan we are talking about maha maya not yog maya yog maya is internal potency yog maya has the power even to cover bhagwan that's why shri krishna doesn't realize that he is supreme personality of godhead narayan 
and that then and, and he considers himself to be a small child and that's why he becomes afraid of mother yashoda he becomes actually afraid he's not playing a drama vishwana chakravarti analyzes he is not playing a drama he is actually afraid why because the yog maya has covered the knowledge of krishna that you are bhagwan so yog maya internal potency has power to cover bhagwan that internal potency can never become covered by external and that proves that we do not have krishna prem otherwise we wouldn't be here right now here one last question yes then what about our let uh, us say that uh, as i heard that uh, yes. we have a constitutional relationship with krishna yes so if we don't have a krishna prema itself in initial so where is the constitutional position because if we have only the means uh, uh, loving propensity yes. which we don't know whether in which of the rasa it is yes yes so we don't know initially when we are practicing that we are uh, in friends of relationship or in mm-hmm. madhurya or whatever relationship mm-hmm. it means all these things are a mis constitutional mm-hmm. position is not there till yes the i understand your question constitutional position when it is uh, token uh, of by shri chaitanya mahaprabhu that uh, in chaitanya charita amrit jeevir swarup hoy krishna nitya das that uh, the constitutional position of the living entity is that he is always krishna servant that chaitanya mahaprabhu talks about a very general sense of constitutional position not a very specific that's why living entity has the power to change his rasa if he is already established as uh in in sakya bhav but later on in his sadhana if he associates with a devotee who is in a shringar mood then the mood of that person who is in sakya bhav can become changed to shringar and so also his relationship with krishna can become changed the examples are there in the in the history and also in the shastra that's why there is nothing like fixed relationship or pre existing relationship the only pre existing relationship that the entity has is of a general kind not a specific kind the specific kind can always change but the general kind of relationship that living entity has towards krishna can never change that is always there and what is that jivir swarup hoy krishna nitya das that living entity is the servant of krishna whether living entity is in vatsalya bhav he is in dasya bhav is in sakya bhav shant bhav or in shringar he is always a servant of krishna that's why krishna das kaviraj says in uh, chaitanya charitamrit adi lila 5th chapter that whether nand whether we talk about nand yashoda or whether we talk, talk about the cow and boy friends of krishna <coughs> or whether we talk about the cow and damsels of shri krishna or whether we talk about krishna's own counterpart like balram who is not not different from krishna who is not a potency but who is a potent principle balram is not a potency balram is a potent principle shaktiman himself just a different form of a krishna all of these are actually servants of krishna that is how krishna das kaviraj puts it ekale eshwar krishna ar sab vritya dani explains that even narayan is servant of krishna narayan who is not a potency but who is potent even he is servant of krishna what to speak of living entity who is marginal potency that is why the when it is said that the constitutional position of the living entity is that he is servant of the lord that means he is controlled by the lord and that that's why even when living entity doesn't accept that i am servant of the lord he is still servant of the lord one example can be given that just like uh, a pauper who has drunk uh, who has drunk wine or liquor and uh, who is considering himself to be king because in a drunken state he is considering uh, due to illusion himself to be a king although he is pauper that's the reality he considers himself and he doesn't consider himself to be a pauper he considers himself to be a king but he is still pauper in the same way under the influence of external potency mahamaya the living entities think themselves to be separate enjoyers of the material world they do not realize that they are servants of the lord but still they are servants of the lord just like a pauper still is a pauper even though he may not accept that he is a pauper that is why the constitutional position of the living entity to be a servant of krishna is always there whether he accepts or not in a very general sense because living entity is controlled by the lord because even if if living entity considers himself to be a separate enjoyer of the material world he is still bound to follow the laws of material nature and 
if he doesn't follow the laws of material nature, then the material nature Maya uh, gives pain to that living entity. Maya Pishachi. Maya Pishachi. That's the function of Maya. That when the living entity tries to enjoy the material world, considering himself to be Bhokta, considering himself to be separate enjoyer, and forgetting that Krishna is the only Bhokta, Bhoktaram Yirke Tapasam, then what Maya does is that Maya, you know, gives all these miseries and uh, different types of uh, afflictions of miseries uh, to the living entity, and that living entity undergoes suffering given by Maya. So, who is Maya? Again, Maya, who is, who is the chastiser of conditioned, conditioned, conditioned living entities, that Maya is again the servant of the Lord. That is why living entities are always servant of the Lord, because they are always controlled by the Lord, whether they accept that they are controlled by the Lord or not. They are always controlled by the Lord. That's why they are always servants of the Lord. In a very general sense, it is said that the living entity is a servant of the Lord. That is his constitutional nature. But the specific relationship that living entity has with Krishna can become changed at any point of sadhana. That's why we see that even Subal, uh, Subal and Madhumangal, they are Priya Narma Sakhas. So it is mentioned by Rupa Goswami in Ujjwal Nilamani and in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu also that Subal and Madhu Mangal have two types of relationships with Krishna. One is that they are in the mood of fraternity, Sakya Bhav. And the other is they have a bit of conjugal also. They have a bit of conjugal. But that bit of conjugal doesn't become expressed in a full-fledged way. Therefore, they do not reciprocate with Shri Krishna in the same way that the cowherd maidens of Vrindavan reciprocate. They have a bit of just a faint reflection of conjugal, not real conjugal, just a faint semblance or reflection of conjugal Subal and the other Priyanarma Sakhas have. That is why when Subal and the other Priyanarma Sakhas of Krishna, they are used to intimately reciprocate with the cowherd themselves like Lalita, Vishaka, etc. If you will read, Vidak Madhav drama, Lalit Madhav drama, and all these other Lila Granthas, books <coughs> mentioning pastimes of Krishna, Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan, like Govind Lila Amritam, Krishna Bhavana Amrit Mahakavyam, Vishwana Chakravarti, etc. Then you will see that the only males who are allowed to enter, besides Krishna, the only males who are allowed to enter into the uh, into the amorous pastimes of Radha and Krishna are the Priya Narma Sakhas. And the reason why they are allowed is because they have tinge of Shringar in them. That is why they are allowed. So that is why, and, that, and, and uh, also uh, it is said that uh, as long as the living entity doesn't reach the stage of Prema Bhakti, his relationship with Krishna can change at any time. If he reaches the stage of Prema Bhakti, then that relationship becomes fixed after that. And Jeev Goswami is uh, very much peculiar about that. Jeev Goswami says that in Golok Vrindavan, actually, there are transcendental bodies made up of Sat Chit and Ananda. But those bodies are inactive. Like, they are not exactly like dummies. They are not exactly like dummies. They are because dummy is completely unconscious. But they are inactive. In that sense, they are resembling the dummies. They are Satchin Ananda. They are full of cognition and consciousness, but they are inactive. And those bodies, they are waiting for the perfected devotees to come and become present within them. That's why, if suppose if we are in the, uh, if we are in, uh, if we are uh, wanting to become Krishna's or Srimati Radhika's maid servant, Manjri, that is conjugal mood, Manjri Bha. So. Uh, what happens is that uh, uh, there is one specific transcendental body which is kept for us in the spiritual world and that is eternally present in the spiritual world but until the time that our soul enters into that transcendental body it that body remains inactive as long as the soul as soon as the soul enters after that the devotee becomes perfect in his sadhan bhakti attains prema bhakti leaves this gross body and subtle body forever becomes celebrated, crosses over to the spiritual world and enters into Golok Vrindavan, what happens? The living entity enters into that pre-existing transcendental body, which is especially kept for him. And then that pre-existing transcendental body becomes full of, it starts functioning. 
So Parsha the Sharir is given to us. Marginal living entity is marginal potency. Ontologically speaking, all by itself, all on its own, it's marginal, pure marginal. If living entity wants to come in the material world, it's it needs body made up of external potency, either subtle body or gross body, both are made up of external potency Maya. If living entity wants to come to the material world. And if living entity entity wants to serve Shri Krishna in either of the five relationships in spiritual world, he also needs a body. But a transcendental body given by Ahaladini Shakti. And that transcendental body is pre is uh, is pre-existing and it becomes fully functional when that living entity enters into that. So that is that so what I'm trying to say here is that that specific relationship is not uh, is not predetermined. It is not predetermined. Only the cost constitutional position of living entities that is to become controlled by Krishna. In that sense, they are servants. Only I mean, that is uh, pre-existing. Otherwise, the specific relationship can be either revoked at some point of sadhana, and new an another type of specific relationship can also be started. Therefore, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu tried to convince Venkat Bhatta, and uh, Rupa and Sanatan also tried to convince uh, the father of Jiva Goswami, their younger brother uh, Anupam. Why? They, they were already on the stage of Prema Bhakti. Vaikuntha Bhatta, Vaikunt Bhatta already was on the stage of Prema Bhakti uh, through the Vaidhi Sadhan process of Narayan. Uh, he was already in the Dasya Bhava of Narayan. His established his relationship of being a servant of Lord Narayana was already established. And, uh, and this uh, Murari Gupta, Murari. who was servant of, um, who, was, who was actually Hanuman. Her Hanuman is Nitya Siddha Parshan. His, uh, his, uh, his uh, position of being a servant of uh, Ramchandra is uh, already uh, pre-established. So why uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu tried to convince Murari Gupta to become devotee of Krishna instead of Ramchandra? And why did Chaitanya Maha, uh, I mean, Rupa and Sanatan Goswami, they also tried to convince Anupam Goswami, uh, the father of Jiva Goswami, to reject Lord Ramchandra and to uh, again become devoted to Krishna? Because at any point of sadhana, person can change his relationship, specific relationship, as long as he doesn't enter into the spiritual world, he has the option of changing his relationship and also of changing his Ishtadev. He can also change from Ram to Krishna if he likes, or from Krishna to Ram, or from Ram to nursing, etc. These are, okay, so I think you can, you have understood it. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Short question? I was just wondering, yes. these uh, people in Vrindavan who are Sharajya Muth, they yes. also try to cultivate their uh, bhav of gopi yeah. and uh, on a very premature level. So will <laughs> that justify their behavior because they are trying to develop some mood with Krishna? In no, 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 if they are not following the proper process and the regulative <laughs> principles of sadhana bhakti, it's just like uh, Gauti Das Babaji Maharaj gave an example that Sahajiyas, when they uh, display artificially the Ashta Sattvika Bhavas, and uh, all that, then that is just like a crying of a barren woman. Barren woman who cannot produce child. She also has, uh, you know, sometimes uh, some uh, barren woman of a duplicitous nature, she imitated the outcry of a woman who is about to <coughs> deliver. deliver a child. So, because she mimicked or she imitated the outcry of a real mother, uh, that doesn't mean that she can actually give or deliver a baby. That's just an artificial imitation. In the same way, the Ashtasatvik Bhavas <laughs> that are displayed by the Sahajiyas artificially through uh, duplicitous endeavor are just like an outcry of a barren woman without actually having the seed of that Nitya Siddha Krishna Prem or Bhav within their heart. That seed is not there, it's just artificial external uh, endeavor of uh, imitation. Yes. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. A five minutes kita. Yes, yes, yes. अच्छा हरे कृष्णा ये राधा कृष्ण प्रभु का हम लेक्चर जो है लाइव ब्रॉडकास्ट करते हैं अभी भी जो है ये लेक्चर पूरा लाइव ब्रॉडकास्ट हुआ है सभी स्कॉन मंदिरों में और सब जगह तो अगर आप चाहें तो आप अपनी ईमेल दे दो तो आपके यहाँ भी वो लाइव वाईला और दूसरा राधा कृष्ण प्रभु की हमारे पास 400 आवर्स का हिंदी लेक्चर्स की सीडी है एंड 200 आवर्स का इंग्लिश सीडी है तो वो आप ले सकते हैं इस फ्री 
आप जो डोनेशन <coughs> दे सकते हैं तो ईमेल आप दे दीजिए और सीडी मेरे पास है जिनकी इच्छा हो ले सकते हैं टेकर्स Can we do a five minutes keep in standing? Yeah, uh, I think uh, some uh, one of you can lead. Who will take the lead? Yeah. Uh,